Welcome back. I've been working on some tech type videos and I realized that I should probably cover cylinder numbering and how it relates to different engine types. Where does our cylinder numbering really come from? And the short answer is whatever the engineer that's designing that project decides. But there are some simple rules that can help you find at least cylinder number one on a multi-cylinder engine most of the time. The first thing that we need to cover to make this make sense is engine orientation. The back of the engine is the part that's connected to the tr transmission. The front of the engine is the part that's got the belt. This is a snowmobile belt, but you get the idea. It's the only one I had off of you. I don't have any off of vehicle right now, so snowmobile belt. The end with the belt is considered the front of the engine, and that's where our cylinder numbering generally starts from. I've drawn this little rectangle on here and that is going to represent the pulley where the belt sits and the front of the engine. This larger rectangle is going to represent the block. When we have an inline engine, it's really easy. So this would represent each one of these circles represents a cylinder. So for an inline block, we start at the balancer or the front, and it's cylinder one, two, three, four. I can't think of anybody that does anything other than that on an inline engine. This would be our V8 style of engine. This particular one represents a Ford. And Fords tend to bite guys that are used to working on pretty much anything else when it comes to cylinder numbering because they are different. This would be an example of a V8 type engine. We have four bores down each side. When you're looking at these bores in an engine bay, it's not always easy to see this, but they're generally offset by about an inch. The farthest forward cylinder, no matter the brand, is almost always number one. Ford screws people up because first of all cylinder number one is backwards of what Chevy and Chrysler do and secondly they number their cylinders differently so the way that Ford numbers is all down one bank so they will start off with one two three four and then they switch over to the driver's side and do five six seven Eight. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you which way is right or which way is wrong, but this one screws people up if they're not familiar with Fords. So kind of your general mechanic sometimes will run into issues. And even when it comes to things like OBD2 sensor data and things like that. Because most vehicles will have cylinder number one on the driver's side. Whereas Ford puts cylinder number one on the passenger side. Now this would be a typical V8 setup from Chevy or Mopar, which would be Dodge, Chrysler, all of those people. If you look at where our furthest forward cylinder, we're now over here on the driver's side, which is going to be cylinder number one. This method when I did the Ford, I said I wasn't going to say which one was right or which one was wrong. This one makes more sense to me. What, at pretty, what pretty much everyone but Ford does, or at least on their older stuff, is they follow the crankshaft down through the center and go back. So the cr crankshaft would be in the center. So cylinder number one is up here. The next cylinder in line on the crankshaft would be over here. It's two. Next is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how most of your other engines are numbered. As we get into the newer times, some of them do a little bit different. One of the relatively universal truths is, when I say relatively universal, I can't think of an example where this is not the case. Cylinder number one will always be the farthest towards the front on the engine. The rest of this stuff 
is kind of up to what the engineer decides they want to number it. That's all I've got for you today on this topic. Hopefully you learned something. If you enjoyed it, if you want to see more, subscribe, like, share, all of that good stuff. You know the drill. And I'll see you later.